This is huge for David Reinbacher and the Montreal Canadiens as he gets some huge praise from not only his teammates, but his coaches. And Arpin Basu does a little bit of a dive into saying some scouts believe that he could start in the NHL as soon as the beginning of next season. We have to talk about everything David Reinbacher, plus the Habs versus the Panthers as Nick Suzuki might just get 40 goals this year. Slavkovsky starts another point streak. There is so much good that we got to get into, so stick around for all of that coming up on this episode of Habs Digest. Jesse, we're first going to get into the game, though. There was so much good, so much to talk about, and if you guys watched this game, you'll know my gosh, that was one of the best games the Habs have played all year. The Habs just consistently go head-to-head -head with some of the top teams in the league. Not, and we're not far removed from beating Colorado. Don't forget, last time we played Florida, it went to a shootout. Going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Boston, Toronto, all these playoff teams. And Montreal came out with a convincing victory as Montebo makes 37 saves, of course. But the big stories here, well, Armia had a fantastic game as well. But Jesse Nick Suzuki, I mean, he is now on this list of like most multi-point games before he He's uh, 25. I think he was up there on a list with like five or six of the greatest names in Habs history. He's at 32 goals now, which puts him in a tie for 23rd in the league in goal scoring with pretty much only elite names ahead of him. Is there a possibility he gets 40? Uh, maybe not, but I feel like 35 is not out of the question. And I mean, how often have you looked at a 35 goal center who's elite defensively and have not said, yeah, that guy is, is a legit number one? Yeah, I think, you know, you have to expect 35 at this point now. And I think that's what's amazing is just seeing his offense kind of ramp up as the seasons kind of went on here. And I think that that's the big thing for tonight and tonight's game is just the offense has taken over. Like we could have had seven very easily tonight, you know, besides if we didn't have like Matheson almost pulling a Matheson where you see a couple of times that we're like, you're almost sure it goes in, but somehow just in like Josh, the hockey gods needed in. to make right. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> right. And then we get that call later where the ref says that the puck goes in. Only Toronto, only the war room in Toronto would be so cruel oh. to give the wrong call. They then come back and then say, sorry, it didn't go in. That can kind of play with your team a little bit. It's a little bit anticlimactic, right? But the, the Habs are able to really rally back tonight. And for sure, you know, you could say, okay, the Florida Panthers were – Playing the night before, maybe there's a little bit of flu going on in their locker room right now. But it's like Florida's not caring if if Montreal is going through this, you know. So we definitely we got to do the same, right? It's this time of year, a lot of teams are battling through some sicknesses. So this is honestly an amazing W for the offense that exploded tonight. You you got to play with the hand that you're dealt. And if you're Florida and you're wanting to win a Stanley Cup, I mean, that's what they've built their roster to do. There are no excuses. And I don't think they're going to make any. I don't think Paul Maurice or any of the players are going to say, oh, well, we were tired second night of a back-to-back. -back. They know that come a playoff series, they're going to be way more banged up and tired than they were coming in to play Montreal tonight. That's just not acceptable for them, I'm sure. So that's going to be a reality check for them. But all the same, you, you'd think they'd come in after that game, losing against Toronto, giving up six goals that they want to come in and dominate Montreal, but it was Montreal doing the dominating. And a lot of that, Jesse, was your eyes. Slavkovsky. So we got to talk about him as well because Slav, his play tonight was so phenomenal, driving the entire Habs offense in that first period while he only ended up with one assist starting a new point streak um, as a 20-year-old, not a teenager anymore. He, he just drove the play every single step of the way, winning board battles, a, an amazing zone entry leading to like great offensive chances all the time, uh, you know, on that Caulfield goal. It was perfect. And here's a stat they showed during the game. First 24 games of Uri Slavkovsky's career, uh, well, not, not his career, sorry, this season. First 24 games of this season, he was on a 24-point pace for the season. Next 24 games, he was on a 41-point pace for the season. In his last 25 before tonight, where he did also register a point, 74-point pace over his last 25 games. He arguably, for stretches in this game, looked like the most dominant player on the ice. For the entire game, I'm not so sure. Barkov always looks like one of the most dominant players on the ice versus Montreal. Of course, Suzuki doing his work as well. But Slav just, I feel like every time I watch now, he just pops off the screen at me because of everything he does right. You totally nailed that. Just basically, not just like on the Montreal Canadiens, but both teams. That's a great observation, Josh. Slavzilla, the Slovakian Godzilla, you know, just an absolute beast tonight. We call him Slavzilla for a reason. Like, you're completely right, Josh. Like, he is driving play in that first period. He's making these behind the back, still getting opportunities on net. Just basically 
creating everything. And you see really that confidence growing where now he's starting to believe it. And definitely, you know, you'd have to say maybe that Suzuki was the best offensive player with those two goals, that beautiful tip goal there tonight. But like, Slav is right behind him, having somebody really great to work with. So it's just amazing to see. And I really feel like Slav, besides the points, besides the offense, he's a big reason why we're getting the big W tonight. It's because he's able to kind of play with that, that physicality. That's how you're able to really step up to a team like Florida, which is amazing. One of the best teams in the league. Like, if it's not from that goal for Sam Bennett, the, the Florida man, mm -hmm. well, technically he's from Ontario, <laughs> but like, this is a route tonight, you know, like we're, we're mopping the floor with them, you know, and that's something you can't take for granted, you know, against one of the better teams in the league. Yeah. Again, Montreal going toe to toe with some of the best teams in the league, by the way, guys, some of this just wanted to show this before we transition to the next subject. They showed this during the game too. Wanted to give a props to Sam Montembeau. Uh, oh, this is a stat called goalie steals as in wins where a goalie essentially steals the win for you. I believe it's how they count this uh monty i don't think tonight counted as a steal i think the habs comfortably won but uh up there with the top goalies in the league shesterk and binnington sorok and hellebuck with 10 and then nine for each of them monty playing about 15 or 20 less games than all of them and still near the top there so shout out to him another stellar performance tonight great to see let's move on to david reinbacher jesse a guy that could very well start next season with montreal and we're going to be getting into that but oh my gosh some amazing stuff in arpin basu's recent article for the athletic i recommend you guys go read it i will link it down in the description uh, as usual because there's a lot of great stuff in there but the first thing we got to talk about is some of the praise reinbacher got from his teammates so this is a lot of text feel free to pause if you want to read it all i'm just going to summarize it for you guys because i don't want you guys to have to read when you're watching the video who wants that all right so basically he asked one of the top defenders in laval toby b so about David Reinbacher and Toby pretty much said he showed up every single game he's fun to play with I'm really surprised about his game he said you know usually when they come back from Europe they have so much time on the big ice that when they come to North America they're surprised by how little time they have but he said Reinbacher just takes his ice when he needs to skate up he makes fast simple plays he's really smart and he also said Reinbacher asks a ton of questions he said he's a really good kid you can see he's smart and for a young guy not scared to be physical, some amazing stuff. And he went on to say, uh, well, sorry, J.F. Hool, their coach, went on to say, his ability to absorb information is A1 excellent. He is a quick learner, and his adaptation to the new team structure has been excellent. But that's not it, Jesse. So that is some amazing stuff that we'll discuss. But also, this was an interesting note. One of the pro scouts we spoke to about Reinbacher felt he would benefit from starting in the AHL next season, but another felt he would have no problem having Reinbacher on the opening night roster in the NHL. Now, the Habs have that decision to make, and he goes in to say how Coach Marty has sort of insinuated that it also might make more sense for Reinbacher to start in the AHL. First off, how impressed are you that this is the kind of praise he's getting? Like, I know he's, like, beloved in this organization, but to hear this stuff from, like, Alec Bisson, a veteran, one of these lead leaders of this team, and a coach in JF Ull, who's very much a straight shooter, that's amazing. And to, to top it all off, let me know, what do you think? Do you think he should start the NHL next season? Well, these words, you know, first off, really matter a lot, you know, coming from your coach when you're looking to really develop into that NHL player. Like, when your coach... Like, basically, the best compliment a Quebecois can ever give you is to call it A1, top shape, you know, kind of thing like that. Like, Reinbacher, he's getting it right away. And it's for that reason that even though there would be every reason to have him start in the AHL just because we have such a stacked decor right now with young guys, I think he's going to be so big, good that you're just going to need to give him that opportunity. He's going to show that he deserves it. That he belongs. Why? Because... He's going to be able to make those right decisions, which is basically one of the most important things as a young D-man, as he's proving, as he's getting, you know, all this praise for Because that's what it really comes down to at the NHL level is if you can make those quick plays. We're seeing he can adjust already. He can play that North American game. He's actually adjusting very quickly, you know, mm -hmm. to the style of play over here. So, again, this kind of cementing that this might have been a better pick then, you know, then we think after all, you know, we just need to be a little bit patient. But I honestly think with the amount of poise that this guy has, the maturity, again, that simple game, I love that, you know, that could possibly influence this team uh, further. And just almost a calming influence when you got a guy kind of playing that north-south, knowing when to hold on to it, when to kind of play that simple game, you know. So I honestly feel that David Reinbacher is going to be on the open eight night roster for the Montreal Canadiens this year coming up. I, I can definitely see a world where that happens, depending on, you know, the progression they see in this offseason as well maybe even into training camp i think that's going to be an option to have like i don't think they're going to go into this saying no you're definitely staying in laval you just evaluate it on a day-to-day -day basis um one line from the article that i really liked as well jesse is a line saying 
the best defensemen in the NHL aren't always flashy, right? And that's the thing with Reinbacher. Like, and the thing that I love maybe the most of all the praise he's getting is the fact that there's a consistent theme, like we even saw with Slav, is like he is asking so many questions. He is extremely receptive to feedback, but also he learns at an extremely fast rate. Where have we heard that before? These kind of players, when you combine that incredible natural skill and size that you can't teach with your in amazingly smooth skating and IQ, and then also you are a guy who's driven to get better, takes every bit of advice you get, and is asking all the right questions to improve within your team, your organization, and improve yourself. There, is, To me, there's literally nothing else you could ask for from a top prospect except maybe some some better stats, but to me, those are only going to come when you have that kind of attitude. It's so true. His whole lack of ego is just serving him so well. You can kind of see that as being a common theme with Slaff, like kind of happy-go-lucky. You can tell, not you know, pretty positive guys. You know, you can tell they're definitely getting along with Marty for that. Um, just keeping cool, calm, collected. You know, you'd almost throw Samuel Montebo in that category too. Yeah. Like those even feel guys, you know, and everything that don't get too high, too low. Um, you know, those are guys that can kind of be consistent and kind of handle the mental aspect of the game. But, you know, his play on the ice, we have to remember who he's kind of been compared to early on in his career. A lot of his statistics kind of show to a Roman Yossi type of player. Now we look at Roman Yossi, a defenseman, the, uh, you know, unquestioned leader for the Nashville Predators. Amazingly consistent player, mm -hmm. not just defensively, but also being able to chip in offensively night after night all the time, right? Like this is high praise when you're getting compared to this type of guy who really helps your team win. So this is the type of player that we have in Reinbacher. And I think he's going to be the player. The more that we see him, he's just going to keep getting better and better, but there's going to be some, some big leaps there. And I think that's going to start with next year. Let's hope so. What do you guys think? We'd love to see all the comments down below about if you think David Reinbacher will start next season for the Montreal Canadiens or in Laval. I still think it's very possible he could start with Montreal. I think if I'm just like playing the odds and what I truly think is going to happen, I think he starts in the AHL with Lane Hudson next season, and then we see them get called up at, at whatever point. But hey, you never know what training camp will lead to. You never know what the offseason will lead to, and there could be some surprises in store. But that'll do it for this episode of Habs Digest. If you enjoyed, leave a like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Check us out on Spotify. If you don't want to watch a video on your data, just go download our podcast, Habs Digest, on Spotify. We'd really love if you checked it out. I'm Josh Goss, my co-host, Jesse Poirier. We'll catch you in the next one.